Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, December 21st, 2015. Here are our top stories. Tonight, Alex Jones breaks down Seymour Hersh's report on the war within the Pentagon. Then, Apple's Tim Cook on encryption. After that, Republican Lindsey Graham exits the presidential race. And he is becoming ISIS's best recruiter. They are going to people showing videos of Donald Trump insulting Islam and Muslims in order to recruit more radical jihadists. So Trump isn't in an ISIS video, but guess who is? Bill Clinton. That's next. I wouldn't want to attack Donald Trump, but I mean, who knows if I could beat Donald Trump up, he might kick my butt. But I guarantee you I can kick this guy's butt because it's a straw man. This one's paper mache. It's a paper tiger. A real tiger, I couldn't take on a real tiger. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 well, it's that time of year when we all look back and take stock of what's happened in the previous year. And of course, for Obama, he's looking not only at that, but what he's accomplished with his last seven years. You know, he's had Obamacare. He's opened up the border to try to remake our country demographically. But just in the last year, the New York Times points out his uh, list of goals and his checklist. They say as Obama checks off a list of his goals that he's met, a nervous nation dwells on terror. And they list some of his accomplishments just this last year. He's had a nuclear agreement with Iran, an international climate accord, and a 12-nation Pacific trade pact, which, of course, really hasn't passed yet. But the New York Times and all of us know that that's a done deal. And so now his New Year's resolution is going to be gun control. See, what the people are concerned about is terrorism. But they spend that and they redirect that into gun control, because that's the one thing that he wanted to get done in the eight years that he hasn't done yet. He's going to do it with a, an executive order, and we're going to talk about that. But of course, what he's going to exploit is your fear. That's the way they get you to throw away your constitutional rights. And listen to what a Virginia Democrat senator said, Senator Tim Kaine. He said there was a moment where he should have said, okay, people are afraid. We understand that. We're going to look at the people that are coming into this country but he didn't, okay? Instead, as I said, they, put, they pivot to white males with guns, as we've heard earlier today, and they pivot to border, uh, gun control instead of border patrol. I wanna play for you something that actually is kind of funny, but there's, it makes an important point. There was an article up on uh, the Daily Mail, what would happen if Donald Trump was an upper class English aristocrat? They have a c British comedian who overdubs his voice, says exactly the same thing. Now, I want you to listen to what he says without the New York accent and see if you can hear what he is saying. I'm a big believer in the Second Amendment. The bad guys will always have guns, Barbara. So Paris, boom, boom, boom. Uh, if you look at California, nobody had guns except the bad guys. If you have three or four people like me, I have the right to carry. I have a license to carry. Yeah. If you had people like me in that room, and somebody starts shooting, I guarantee you, we're going down shooting. You are carrying a gun now? No, not now. Ordinarily, do you carry a gun? A lot of the time, I have the right to carry. Isn't it interesting that when you hear it said in the voice of a British aristocrat, spoken differently, there's a lot of truth in what Donald Trump was saying. That's why he is resonating with people. People understand the real issue is not the fact 
that Americans have guns to protect themselves. The real issue is, are the open borders, not even attempting to vet the people that are coming in from countries that we have fomented unrest and war with. Now, there are some things, of course, about Donald Trump that we should be concerned about. We've talked about that here. I've mentioned multiple times the fact that Donald Trump talks about using a kind of Chinese-style censorship of the Internet. And uh, Rand Paul began the last debate talking about that. He says when Trump says we ought to close that Internet thing, the question is, what does he mean by that? Should we do it like they do it in North Korea, like they do it in China? And so right after the debate, Sean Hannity got him on his program, and they talked a little bit about this, and they they talked about the internet uh, issues, but they also talked about what Donald Trump said when we, he said we should punish the families of those who are terrorists. So they explore that. What's really amazing, I think, is what Sean Hannity says. Listen to this. So I think when he says these outlandish things, someone needs to call him on it. So I was glad I did. Yeah. He says other things like, well, we should kill the terrorist families. So we're going to kill like their two-year-old kids, their four-year-old kids. And the thing is, is that to kill bystanders and non-combatants goes against what America well, stands for this, and goes against the Geneva Convention. There, there was an exact, I, I'm not so sure if I agree with all the Geneva Conventions and whether or not other countries follow those rules. There's a different, separate debate. Isn't that amazing? Sean Hannity, well, you know, there's things about the Geneva Convention that I don't really agree with. And the context of saying, are you going to kill two-year-olds and four-year-olds? And of course, uh, Sean Hannity and Fox News has jumped in continuously on the side of waterboarding. They don't have anything to say when our government uh, attacks a hospital and shoots that up. So, yeah, he has a problem with not only the Geneva Convention, but with war crimes in general, and he won't say anything about it. Now, Obama is exploiting the fear of people, as we see with uh, ISIS and other issues, but he's also afraid of something himself. What is Obama afraid of? Well, he's afraid of those blue collar white men that he's talking about, and not just white men, all blue collar workers, because they haven't done so well under Obama. He says uh, economic and demographic changes in the country, including his own quote unquote unique demographic, implying that people who don't like him again are racist. He says they've left a void that Donald Trump is exploiting. Quote, he says, particularly blue collar men have had a lot of trouble in this new economy. You know, the one that Obama has created to destroy your jobs. He says, well, they're no longer getting the same bargain that they got when they were going to a factory and able to support their families on a single paycheck. Yeah, you can't do anymore. Can't do that anymore. Thank you, Obama. You know, these blue collar workers could very easily, if they switch over to the Republican Party, and of course, that's the key. Will they switch over to help uh, Donald Trump win the primary? Because once he wins that primary, I think you're going to see a lot of Democrat voters, if that happens, you'll see a lot of Democrat voters in the general election who are working class people, blue collar workers who really understand how they have been totally screwed by this new economy that uh, Obama has created, along with the uh, Republican leadership. Let's point that out. They're working hand in hand with him in doing that. That is really what they're afraid of. But you know, we need to remember as Obama is going to push his executive orders to increase surveillance, as he's gonna push his executive orders for gun control, it's really about people control. And we need to remember that we have laws, we have Geneva Conventions, we have international laws, and we have a constitution that they don't want to pay any attention to. A good positive sign that we are winning in many aspects of the information war is what this new senator, uh, Ben Sass, pointed out when he talked about how this is going to work if we don't shut down executive orders. Neither the left nor the right really have a problem with uh, executive orders, as long as it's their guy. And so we have to ask, you know, who cares about the rule of law anymore? Does anybody on the left, anybody on the right? We have a new senator, Ben Sass. He points out that the reactions of the Congress, and I would say also the American public, are just as reprehensible, their reactions to executive orders are just as reprehensible as Sean Hannity's reactions to Geneva Convention being violated. Here's what the senator had to say. Imagine President Trump has been propelled into the White House with 300 electoral votes, having won mainly by the force of his personality, by calling BS on this town, and by his promise to get things done by acting unilaterally. The first 100 days are huge. He signs an order that turns the Peace Corps into stonemasons to build the Southern Wall. He shutters the Department of Education, and by executive order, he turns the Department of Interior into the classiest oil company the world has ever known. What happens next? 
Would those who've stayed silent about executive overreach over the last seven years suddenly find religion? After years of legislative atrophy, would Congress spring into action and remember its supposed power of the purse? And what about Republicans? After having raged against a supposedly lawless president, would many suddenly find that they're actually okay with a strongman president so long as he's wearing the same colored jersey they are? And of course, Senator Sass is saying, do you understand that if you allow Obama to do this, then you may have a president down the road that you don't like, those of you on the left. And we need to understand also with the issues. If you're going to let him dictate by executive order gun control, understand that he or somebody else is going to dictate further NSA surveillance and spying and loss of your property and shutting down freedom of speech. And we don't know which party is going to do that. Maybe both of them will do that. You have to understand the principle. And of course, this is something, and we're going to talk about the Democrat debate later in the show with Leanne McAdoo. But this is something that, again, came up in this last debate with Hillary Clinton saying we need to have some kind of a Manhattan-like project to control the internet, to surveil people. This is a major push uh, by the government. Even after the Ed Snowden leaks, they are still continuing to push for more of your information. So hopefully the people on the left are going to understand that we can't move this way by executive action, that we have to stand for individual rights. Now, one of the ways that this is happening, of course, we had uh, Tim Cook uh, from Apple, the Apple CEO, talked about this back in June. And he said at the time when he was talking to uh, Epic, which is a foundation for uh, honoring uh, electronic privacy, he says, like many of you, we at Apple reject the idea that our customers should have to make trade-offs between privacy and security. We can and we must provide both in equal measure. We believe that people have a fundamental right to privacy. The American people demand it. The Constitution demands it. Morality demands it. And I would point out also his profits demand it. If Apple doesn't stand up for privacy and make sure that they can sell, tell people that your information is private, they're going to lose their sales internationally. And they will also perhaps lose a lot of them nationally, even though the American people are the ones who are the least understanding of the danger that this presents. Now, he repeated these charges this last weekend on 60 Minutes, and he immediately got some pushback. And I want to talk to you about the pushback, but first let's talk about whether or not we can trust Apple on this. Remember we had the leaks back in, in uh, September of 2013, part of the Snowden leaks. This was put out by uh, the German paper Der Spiegel. And they showed a series of slides that involved Apple at the time. And what they said, they showed uh, the iPhone. They said, who would have thought back in 1984 that this would become Big Brother? And they show Steve Jobs holding up an iPhone. And that users would willingly pay for it, comparing them to zombies. And so what they're saying is that you are a zombie. You're willing to pay for your surveillance. You don't understand what it's about. You don't understand the implications of it, and you will pay for it. They don't even have to put the Big Brother box in there. You will buy that thing from Apple. And they put Apple at the very center of this. And they also think it's interesting to note that they referred to Internet users as, quote, unquote, adversaries. So whether or not uh, Apple is providing backdoors to people, it is important for Tim Cook to say that they don't. And it is important for us to stand behind companies when they do stand up for our privacy. We need to understand that our individual rights are fundamental. Nevertheless, we have a Manhattan district attorney and a U.S. senator, one of the new senators, completely opposite from the new senator that I just talked about earlier. We have a Manhattan DA fires back after Apple CEO defends his stance on apt encryption. Uh, and again, he said, if the government, this is Tim Cook saying, uh, if the government lays a proper warrant on us today, then we will give the specific information requested because we have to by law. But in the case of encrypted information, we don't have anything to give. Now, why would he say that? This is fundamental for you to understand. Most of the government surveillance is predicated on the idea that third-party providers like Apple or Google or others who handle your data, the phone companies, that once you turn over that information, once they get that information, those third-party people own that information and they can turn it over without a search warrant because it's their information that they want to voluntarily give it they can give it to you. It's not your information, even though they collected it on you, because somehow they're carrying it. So the way to get around this is through encryption, because he can give them the encrypted files, they can have a go at it, but they don't truly have your information, except in an encrypted form. That's the only way we can get around this, as long as we've got a court that's going to maintain the 